to them. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Matthew 4, 19. Good morning, good morning. Woo, hallelujah. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the Lord is worthy to be praised, for he is risen. Praise the Lord. Christ is risen. This is Reverend Sandra Brown, and we thank God for you. We thank God for our blessed Savior, Jesus the Christ. I want to say welcome to the Park Manor Christian Church Disciples of Christ. Thank you so much for joining us. So glad that you are here. Please welcome our worship leaders on today. Yours truly, Reverend Sandra Brown, Reverend Connie Sims, Elder Joyce Butler, Maurice Hurst, Mark Essence, our esteemed pastor, Reverend Dr. William E. Crowder, Jr. Please welcome as well all of our beautiful volunteers in your comment section. Yes, we thank God. We're so grateful for our Facebook congregation. If you're on Facebook, Go ahead and please share the broadcast on your page. Also, I want to acknowledge those that are on the conference, call line, and YouTube. Thank you for joining us on today. And just a few housekeeping matters on today, for we know that everything in God's house truly matters. We're going to have our junior church at 12 30 today praise the lord we want all children to join us wednesday we're going to have our 7 a.m power in the park prayer call i'm sorry it has been canceled but we want you to be in prayer at 7 a.m on wednesday okay The Christian Church, Illinois, Wisconsin Region Disciples Women's Spring Gathering will be at the First Christian Church in Peoria, Illinois on Saturday, April 13th. Envelopes are on the usher's table for your blessing box offering. Some of you have received those envelopes already. Please put your offering in the offering box at the back of the church, the disciples, women who are on Facebook, conference call, line, or YouTube can submit your offering by mailing it to Park Manor Christian Church. Write blessing box offering in the comment section. Contact Elder Cynthia Weber, the president of Disciples Women, if you have any questions. We are looking for women to sing in our choir for Women's Day on May 4th, 2024. We need you to commit to staying one hour after each church service beginning on Sunday, 
April 14th. That is next Sunday. Please contact Jan Toy or Elder Cynthia Weber. If you are interested, please come and sing when the Spirit says sing. Hallelujah. We're going to have a joyous time in the Lord. We are having a Women's Health Expo sponsored by the Park Manor Christian Church Health Ministry. Saturday, May 4th, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., the Community Garden at 83rd and King Drive. It is free. We will have health screening, exercise classes at 1030, come on, health resources, fresh produce giveaway, come on, we're going to have a great time. On-site mammograms for the first 12 women to pre-register. Pre-register at Park Manor Christian Church at yahoo.com and put in the subject line regarding mammograms and include your name, address, and phone number. We want you to come out. It is important. So come join us on May 4th from 10 to 1 p.m. Finally, we're going to commune and Elder Joyce Butler will lead us in Holy Communion. Those of you that are joining us via the conference call line, YouTube, Facebook, go now and prepare your elements. You can use crackers or bread, get some juice or some good beverage because after we finish with the word of God by our pastor, we're going to commune. But right now, Elder is coming to lead us in our call to worship and invocation, followed by a musical selection by Maurice Hurst and Mark Essence, a prayer and moment in the park by Reverend Sims. We will then have another selection and a word from our pastor. And then we will have the offertory appeal and Holy Communion by Elder Butler. But now, let us receive our call to worship and invocation by God's beautiful servant, Elder Joyce Butler. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. What a wonderful opportunity to experience a brand new day. This time has never been before. So we are here to witness time and space that has never been. And we have been blessed to be here. So let us center ourselves and prepare for worship. We come to you, O oh God, to thank you for what is good. We come to you, O oh God, to cry out for what is wrong. We come to you, O oh God, to ask for help and restoration. We come to you, O oh God, with aching hearts, and we come to you with glad souls with all that we are and all that we have, we come. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord God of heaven and earth, creator of our world and everything in it, yet you are as close to us as our own breath. Holy is your name. In you we live and move and have our being. We are your children, the work of your hands. We pray that your Holy Spirit would move among us as we worship today. Open our hearts to you, to your presence, opening our ears to your word. Receive the worship of our hearts and minds and bodies. 
that they may be a pleasing offering to you, O God. We pray in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ, in whose death and resurrection we find life. Amen? Amen. 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 Focus here for a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it is prayer time. It is prayer time. Family, friends, we continue now in prayer. We want to continue to pray for all of those that are on the sick and shut in list. We're still praying for Leroy Taylor and praying for Lillian Taylor, who is taking good care of him, we know. Amen. Amen. Praying for Leo Langley, Ella Simmons, and Winston Simmons, Jr. Senior, excuse me. We're praying for you, too, though. <laughs> Amen. 
Winston Simmons Sr. is on the list. We just know Winston needs prayer. Amen. Rosetta Fletcher, <laughs> Ellie Lessenby and family, Dorothy Flanoy and her son-in-law, Ashton Young, Robert and Gloria Lewis. Continue to pray for Justin Quaza, Barbara Allen, Gladys Wiggins, Zelna McFarlane, Zietta Brown, Derek and Eugene Simmons. We're praying for Ma, the sister of Eli and Jackie Washington. Please keep her and the family in your prayers. And also Lily Hobbs, the sister of Reverend Brown in California. Please keep her in prayer. Keep Elder Phyllis McCune in prayer. She did have a successful procedure this week. Amen. Amen. Please continue to pray for the Pierce Brown family and heartful prayers extended once again to our pastor and the loss of his dear uncle, Walter Harris. We're asking for travel mercies for him as he travels for that service this week. Please keep his two cousins and pastor's dear mother, Maria Crowder, the whole family in prayer. Those services will be held on Thursday. Keeping the family of Patricia Baker and Sue Hill in prayer. Know that we are praying unceasingly for all the bereaved families that have lost loved ones. We are in continual prayer for all those in war around this world, we are praying for all the families that have lost loved ones in disasters and to violence of any kind. Praying re regarding the migrant crisis and for all those in leadership around the world. Please know that we are praying for every member of Park Manor Christian Church, those that are here, those that are on the conference call, those that are on YouTube, Facebook. We are praying for all of you. Let us now go to the throne. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today just thanking you for this new day. Thanking you for the resurrection that we just participated in last week. Thank you, Lord, for this house that you have given us to worship you. We do not take it lightly. We thank you, Lord, that you woke us up today in our right minds, that you clothed us, that you allowed us to be here, that you allowed us to be on the conference call virtually, any way that we are, that we are able to worship you today. We give you praise for that. Lord, we ask you to continue to be with all the bereaved families, all those families that have lost loved ones those that have lost young people to violence. Lord, we ask you to watch over our police officers, our teachers, our doctors, our nurses, our CNAs. Lord, we are asking you to put a special hand on all of them because they are the ones that are watching over us in one form or another. And Lord, we just thank you that you love us the way that you do even in spite of ourselves. We thank you, Lord, that you are available to us 24-7, that whatever we are going through, you have time to listen. We thank you, Lord. We ask you to continue to be with us. We ask you to continue to be with the leaders, that they make the right decisions. And Lord, we ask you to be in our marriages. We ask you to be in our schools. We ask you to be on the streets as we go through each and every day. For there is so much violence out there. But we know that there is still love and hope through you. And we thank you for that. Lord, we ask you to help us to be better better wives, better mothers, better Christians, better workers. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that we got to feed people yesterday. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. 
we thank you that we were able to open our doors and help others, for that is what you have called us to do. And Lord, we just ask you to continue to be with us and that everything that we do is pleasing in your sight. That we learn to be the Christians that you want us to be. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor for you are so worthy to be praised. We ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, Art, if you can hear this, if you could come upstairs now. So this, we're going right into the moment in the park. Yeah. Okay. So this is the moment in the park. And we talked about at the trustee meeting this last week that, you know, all the things that we are doing in the church. And we thought that it was important that the members of the church get to see some of the things that we are doing. So then we ask you to give beyond your tithes and offerings to the campaign fund, that you kind of get a chance to see some of the things that we're doing. Amen? Amen. 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 So can Art hear this one too? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Winston's going to go get him. So what we have are some pictures. Art actually um, is working extra time because he is here when they come to do things. He is here to oversee what they're doing. He is here when we're getting the estimates. It's a lot of work to it. So we are going to show you some pictures. And Art does a better job than I will to explaining to you some of the things that we are doing in the church. Amen? Amen. 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 These are pictures from, I think we're looking at this side gutters. Next. Okay. That is right here in this peak. That is, in yes, wow. in the peak where those speakers are. Oh, okay. That is on this side going up to the peak. That is the center peak. That's above the air conditioners, below the air conditioner. The roof. Same, same below the air conditioner. You see the barbed wire up there? That was above the third floor before they got started putting on the new roof. That is the completed roof. There you go. Amen. Amen. I guess that's it. Thank you, Art. So we just wanted to show you because some things you can't see, but when we say that this is a hundred and ten year old building, we have to do a lot of repairs. So all of those holes that you saw, it was not just a matter of putting something in there and filling it in. We had to replace all of that, okay? The roof, we had to replace the whole roof, okay? So when we are asking you to make donations for this campaign fund, that is so that we can keep the building up. It is not cheap to keep an older building looking the way that we do. The outside work, we live in Chicago, which means there's rain, there's snow, there's sleet, there's everything. It has a tremendous wear on the building. 
okay? So we are slowly replacing all of that. So we will show you pictures again as we replace some other things because we want you to be aware of what we're doing. So we're not just asking for this. There are things that we have to do. So hopefully this is helpful for you to be able to see what we as the trustees of the church are doing. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you. <laughs> If you just hold out till tomorrow, or you just keep the faith through, through the night, if you just If you just hold out till, till tomorrow, if you just keep the faith through the night, if you just hold out till tomorrow, Tomorrow, see everything will be, it will be all right in my life. You see, I've had my share of troubles. See, the darkest hours is just before the day. So many nights I had to lay down and face tomorrow. I knew the Lord will. I know he will. He will make a way. See, I just held out for tomorrow. For tomorrow. See, I just kept the faith through, through the night. I just Held out for tomorrow, for tomorrow. Everything will be, it will be all right. My God, see my God, my God is right now able. Speak peace to your troubling mind. Say he may not come. May not come, mean to come when you want him. But I guarantee he's always, oh yes he is, he's always on time. See, I just held out for tomorrow. See, I just kept the faith all through the night. See, I just held out for tomorrow. For tomorrow, everything will be all, it'll be all right. We give God all the glory and all the praise for the reminder that we can we can hold out until tomorrow i thank god for mark and maurice can we thank god for our music ministry today to elder butler to reverend sims to reverend brown to all of my father's children i greet you in the name of our lord and savior jesus the christ this morning i want to call your attention back to the gospel according to saint matthew chapter 28 and I just want to look at one verse one verse verse 2 that's Matthew's gospel the first 
book of the New Testament, the gospel according to St. Matthew, the last chapter, chapter 28, and verse number two. And if you have it, and if you're able, I want to invite you to stand with me uh, very briefly just for the reading of this one verse, verse two, Matthew 28, uh, verse two. This is the amplified translation of the Bible. It reads thusly, and a great earthquake had occurred for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone from the opening of the tomb and he sat on top of it. Amen. That is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated in God's presence. We are still in that series, Rise, Survive, Thrive, and Flourish. And I would that you would pray with me on this wise Again, back in business, nothing can stop me. But I want to tag this message this morning. This angel's got game. This angel got game. Um, I think uh, Deacon Robert Lewis Jr. will appreciate this. I have become, I have become a fan of women's college basketball. I'm a fan. I love the WNBA pro basketball. I love seeing the young women play the game. Happened to, to watch last week uh, the Elite Eight, which was phenomenal. Got a chance to catch the highlights Friday night of the women's final four, which was awesome. And though her team was eliminated in the Elite Eight, I'm especially taken with this young sister from Baltimore that played at LSU by the name of Angel Reese. Yes. I don't know about y'all, but I like Angel. I like her uh, playing prowess. I like her ball handling skills. I like her power on the boards. I like her style. I like the way she moves. This girl's got game, y'all. And on top of that, I like her name. Her name is Angel. That name Angel in scripture means messenger or guardians of humans. That's what that name means in scripture. The name Angel is mentioned over 273 times in Scripture. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse 1, we learn that angels were created by God. In Job chapter 1 and verse 6, we discover that angels report directly to God. Now, some angels come in human form, some in heavenly form with wings and other out of this world uh, attachments. We know that the prophet Isaiah says that the seraphim and angel each had six wings, two wings covered their faces, two wings covered their feet, and with two wings they fly. But some angels appear in recognizable form, even uh, seeming to be human. For example, the angel that announced the virgin birth to Mary appeared in some kind of recognizable form as if the angel who appeared to the shepherds and the angelic multitude who praised God. I don't know about y'all, but I love angels. And as I've stated, angels are mentioned quite prominently in scripture. One in particular I just read for you, I want to read for us again, in Matthew's account, Matthew's gospel, the 28th chapter, verse 2, where it says that a great earthquake had occurred. An angel of the Lord descended from heaven came and rolled away the stone from the opening of the tomb, and that angel sat on top of that stone. Y'all, an angel came to the resurrection of Jesus the Christ. An angel played a significant role in the resurrection of Jesus the Christ from the dead. When Jesus was murdered by that mob at Calvary, they put, as was their custom, a stone that weighed at least one plus tons over his tomb. Matthew says that the angel appears in the garden where Jesus was entombed. The angel shows up and addresses a problem that the women, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, would encounter at Jesus' tomb. The angel, we are told, rolls back the stone, then takes a seat on top of the stone. I've always wondered why 
did the angel sit down on top of that stone? What would be the reason for this angel to need to desire or to choose to sit on top of this stone? I want you to think with me and consider this question this morning. I think first let us consider this stone. Now, in these days when a person died, they were not taken to a mortician and embalmed and buried. Instead, the deceased was carried outside of the city, wrapped up in a shroud, a sheet-like garment, and was laid on top of a concrete slab or shelf. It was there that the body would typically be anointed with herbs and spices. A typical herbal ointment would have been myrrh at that time, and a napkin would have been placed over the head of the deceased. After which, this large stone was rolled into a channel across the entrance of what is called the catacomb. These stones would sometimes be decorated with paint or would have inscribed with a family name to identify the occupant of the tomb. In Jesus' case, by the time he died at 3 o'clock on that Friday and then removed from the cross, they had to follow all the legal processes to receive the body, had to transport the body and place the body inside of this tomb. However, because it was so late and time was against them, the body would have been placed in the tomb, then the stone set in place, and because it was the Passover, the anointing of the body would have to wait until sometime Sunday morning. Because Jewish law forbade the worshipers to become unclean by touching a dead body prior to celebrating a holy festival. In Jesus' case, the political powers of that day feared that Jesus may attempt to resurrect, thus causing an uprising by his followers. And so to appease the Jewish leaders, Pilate placed the seal of Tiberius Caesar on the stone and placed a security detail to watch the tomb. And the massive size of the stone, weighing some one ton, plus the security detail and the seal, that could only be broken by pilot superiors rendered it impossible for anyone to get inside of the tomb. But here comes the angel. Here comes the angel of the Lord who comes from heaven, removes the stone, and then y'all sits on top of the stone. My question this morning for us is why does he sit on top of that stone? The angel did not need to, to sit down and rest though the angel had traveled all the way from heaven, the angel resisted the Roman security detail. The angel moved a one-ton stone out of the way. The angel did not need to sit down and rest because the angel was not human. The angel was a celestial being. And you know, angels are not bound by time or space or any other system that would apply to humanity. This was an angelic being, y'all. Some have suggested that maybe the angel knew that breaking the seal of Tiberius uh, Caesar without authorization was considered treason and grounds for military action. Perhaps the angel knew this and sat on top of the stone to wait for some other angelic support. Many doubt that premise because the angel's appearance causes such fear and trepidation that the security detail began to tremble and they fell like dead men. Why did the angel sit on top of that stone? Here's my theory as to why the angel sat on top of the stone. You know, it had been prophesied in scripture that Jesus would come and lay down his life for humanity and rise from the dead on the third day. Even Isaiah prophesied of this some 700 years before Jesus' birth. No one in heaven or on earth had ever seen such a thing happen. Sure, other people had returned from, from death at, at God and at Jesus' word, but no person, no angel, no, no deity had ever died and then come back to life of their own accord, their own power. This angel had one job assigned to him, that being to come to earth and move the stone out of the way. And after having moved 
the one-ton stone and rendering the soldiers of Rome unable to stop what was about to happen, the angel had an opportunity unlike any other being in the history of the world. The angel found himself with a front row seat to the single event that would change the course of eternity. The angel, y'all, sat on top of the stone so that he could witness firsthand as Jesus, the resurrected Messiah, walked triumphantly out of the tomb and secured the future of all humanity. The angel, y'all, had a front row seat. The angel sat on top of that one-ton stone, and no one could do anything to stop him. The angel of the Lord played a prominent role in the resurrection of Jesus the Christ. The angel rolled back that one-plus-ton stone all by the angel's self and sat on top of it in order to tell us that angels, number one, have supernatural power. Angels have supernatural power to move problems out of the way. Number two, angels have the supernatural ability to be present with you through tough times. And then finally, angels have the supernatural ability to protect you throughout our way while we are on our way. Y'all, angels have power to move our problems. I wish I had a witness right there. Anybody got some problems? Anybody ever had some problems? I've come to tell you that we have angels that have the power to move our problems. Angels have the power to be present with us. We are not in this situation. We are not on this earth all by ourselves. We have angelic company. And angels have the power to protect us. I told you, I, I like angels. I told you about the young lady that played for LSU, Angel Reese. Yes. I like Angel Reese. She released a statement on last week after her season was over. And I want to read, I want to quote what she said to all of her fans and followers. She said, I'm leaving college with everything I ever wanted. I got a degree. I got a national championship and I got this platform I could not never imagine. Angel goes on to say that this was a difficult decision, but here it is. I trust the next chapter because I know the author. Can I ask you this morning, does anybody know the author? Come on, make some noise in this house and make some noise on your Facebook page. And open up your mouth and thank God that you know the author and the finisher of our faith. I thank God that I know the author. I thank God that we have an angelic contractual agreement with God the author. I have angelic assurance that the same God that sent that angel that moved that one ton plus stone will move things in our lives today. Y'all, God sends... God sends angels to help us when we cannot help ourselves. God sent an angel then, and God sends angels now to see about us, to help us when we can't help ourselves. I, I'm, I'm going to get out your way. I said I'm going to hold you long today. But um, one, one thing about angels is that sometimes they, they fly so close to you <laughs> that you can hear their wings. <laughs> Yeah, angels, sometimes they, they get so close to our circumstances and our situations that, that, that you, you can hear, Lord, their, their wings. You know, some of you have been in car accidents, and, and here you are today. A angels, I wish I had some help there. So, some of you have had surgical procedures and medical situations and medical circumstances, and the angel showed up in the operating room, and here you are today. I love this story that's told, and then I'll get out your way woman, she's walking near this quick mart grocery store and she slipped on some ice and she fell into a gas pump. And as she was trying to get up, this man appeared out of nowhere from the other side of the pump and he helped her up. And so as the man was helping her up, he noticed that the woman had been crying and not because she had fallen into the gas pump, 
And so the man asked this woman who was in an old suburban, crammed full of stuff with three kids in the truck, uh, was she okay? And the woman said, I, I, I just don't want my kids to see me crying. So she stood on the other side of the pump and had a moment where she just cried. And as she was gathering herself, she told the man that she was driving to California because her living boyfriend had taken the $15,000 that she had saved to move her and her kids into a better neighborhood. And so the man at the gas pump, um, the woman assumed was just one of the clerks from the grocery store, the quick mark, said that God heard you. God, God heard you and God sent me to help you. And so the man took a card, swiped it through the card reader on the pump so she could fill up her empty Suburban with gas. And while the Suburban was fueling, the man walked over to the McDonald's and bought two bags of food, some gift certificates for more food and a big cup of coffee. The man gave the food to the woman and she gave it to the kids and the kids started eating as if they hadn't eaten in a long time. The, the woman told, told the man her name and that she knew she wouldn't have the money to pay rent and in desperation she called her parents with whom she had not spoken to in five years and they said she could come home to California. She could come home, she could bring her children and live with them, get herself together. So she packed up everything she owned and was making the drive to California. And after she talked to the man and he told her that he felt that God had sent him to help her, she felt a little bit better. And as the man was walking into the quick mark, the woman saw that the man had dropped an envelope. So she got it, went into the store, and asked the clerk where his colleague was. And the clerk looked puzzled and told her, ma'am, I'm the only one here. The woman said, wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what about the man that was at the pump, the man that walked into the store? And the clerk said, ma'am, you're the first person I've seen in five hours. I, I, I'm done this morning. I, I'm going to leave y'all. But, but is there a witness that can testify that, that sometimes angels fly close enough so that you can hear their wings flapping? God will take care of you. God will help us through whatever it is that we go through. God will provide everything that you and I need to get through the next chapter of our lives. God will send angels. Amen, somebody. God will send angels to come to our rescue. God has done it before. And the God that we serve will do it again. Clap your hands and thank God. And why don't you just open your mouth to your neighbor and just simply say, I thank God for my angels. Thank God. I thank God for my angels. God, I thank you for the wonderful reminder in your word that you already knew that the women headed to the empty tomb would need help and you provided such. I thank you, O oh God, that as we move through this new week, you already know the help that each of us will need. And you've already assigned angels to meet us at the gas pumps of life. You've already assigned angels to be there in that room where decisions are being made. You've already assigned angels to help take care of us. We thank you on this second Sunday in Easter, on this resurrection morning, for the promise of your presence of angels in our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. And all of the children of God shall say confidently and with assurance, amen. 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 Thank God for my angels. Come on and stand to your feet all over the building. I want to extend invitation. I thank God for the opportunity to 
be able to stand and offer this invitation to someone this morning. And if by chance you are listening in on the conference call line, we thank God for your presence today. If you're on the conference call line, the invitation for you is that if you don't have a church home and or if you are in need of prayer, at the end of this service, I want you to hang up the phone and then I want you to pick it back up and I want you to call that number again, this number, 773-483-2115. 773-483-2115. I want you to call that number after all pleasantries are exchanged, after all words are exchanged on that message. I want you to leave your name. I want you to leave your phone number, your name, your phone number. And I want you to simply say, I still believe in angels. I still believe in angels. Yeah. We're still in an attitude of worship and praise. Maybe you're watching on one of the platforms, YouTube or Facebook, thank God for you today. This invitation is for you. If you're without church home, if you're standing in the need of prayer, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go into the messenger. Maybe a precious member of the Park Manor Christian Church invited you to church through that platform. Go into their messenger. Maybe you're on William E. Crowder Jr. Facebook page. Maybe you're on the Park Manor Christian Church Chicago Facebook page. Messenger is open this morning. I want you to get in there. We'll see your name. We'll see your picture. I just want you to simply say, this angel has gain. This angel has some serious gain. We'll know exactly what you mean. We know exactly what you stand in need of, and we will respond to you in like kind. Lastly, maybe you're in the building. Maybe you're in the sacred sanctuary of the Park Manor Christian Church. If you're without a church home, Everything that's been sung, everything that's been prayed, everything that's been shared, this word, this message, it points to this invitation. If you are without a church home, walk towards Reverend Sims. Walk towards Reverend Brown. Walk towards Elder Butler. Walk this way now. Walk this way now. Now let's lift our hands in this sanctuary, wherever you are, and let's sing it one more time. And you know the road is rough, and the going is tough, Thank you. Thank you. and the hills are hard to climb. I started out started. a long time ago. Thank you. There is no doubt. In my mind, I decided to make Jesus my choice. One more time, Maurice. One more time. One more time. And you know the road is rough and the going is tough. Thank you, God. And the knees are.
Well, I'm a witness that angels are real. Angels are real. I mean, the blessings that come that you don't know how or why or when. <laughs> Angels are real. Because our God is real. And we are real to him. Thank you, uh, Reverend Connie and the uh, trustees for the video lesson this morning because oftentimes we don't think about what needs to happen in the church in order to keep our um, sanctuary in a position where we can come <laughs> and get in and not be hurt. So thank you for that vision. Thank you. Today our offertory um, reflection <clears throat> reminds us that giving is a part of stewardship of the things that God has freely given us and is a part of our spiritual development and maturity. As stewards, we joyfully worship God by giving back to him what he has given us. We commit our time, our treasure, and our talent so that the church can be a meaningful work and do God's work for the kingdom here on earth. At this time, we have three ways by which you may submit your offering. You may give back from that which has been given to you. The first way is by mailing a check made out to the church. You can mail it to Park Manor Christian Church, 600 East 73rd Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60619. The address again, Park Manor Christian Church, 600 East 73rd Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60619. Or you may give using our website, www.parkmanorchristianchurch.org. Again, parkmanorchristianchurch.org. And then click the red Give Now button, and under the word Fund, you can scroll down to the appropriate category that reflects your gift. You can also get this giving form using your phone. Technology, we're we catching up. You can use your phone by texting the word PARK, it's P-A-R-K, to the number 73256, and the form will magically appear on your phone. <laughs> Or if you're worshiping with us today in person, you may uh, leave your offering as you enter or as you leave the sanctuary. The wood offering box is located in the back of the church on the north side of the sanctuary. And as we have seen the need for keeping up our church's physical, we, are, we have extended the uh, capital campaign that we have started to create and to raise funds so that we can repair this 110-year-old building. The campaign has been extended to April 30th. So separate from your tithes and your offerings, would you please consider donating either online using that Give Now button or you can mail your 
contribution to the campaign. Or you may secure a campaign um, envelope here in the sanctuary. There are special campaign envelopes in the back of the church at the usher's table and also at the offering box. Thank you so much for your consideration and for your faithful stewardship. Please bow with me for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, help us to overcome our fears about giving with an expectant faith in your ability to provide. Help us to see and systematically set aside resources to give from the blessings you have given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Continue our worship now with the celebration of Holy Communion. It's at this time that we pause to remember, to reflect, and to thank God for the sacrifice that he made for the redemption of our souls. God gave his only son, Jesus, as a living sacrifice. On the night that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was betrayed, he went into the upper room and sat with his apostles. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Family, this is an open communion. All who are part of the family of God are welcome to participate. You should now have your symbols before you. After I offer prayers for the loaf and the cup, we will commune together. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share in the sacrament of Holy Communion in recognition of the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We give thanks for his, this bread, which represents his broken body, and for the cup representing his blood shed 
for us on Calvary's cross, for our redemption. May we be ever mindful that only your wondrous love for us held him there on the cross, and that for this we are ever grateful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Jesus said to his apostles, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. He who believes in me shall never thirst. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. And he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me will live because of me. Jesus took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat the bread together. <clears throat> Likewise, Jesus took the cup after supper and said, This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us drink together. Then came joy and happiness. And they had sung a hymn and went out into the Mount of Olives. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Let the church say amen one more time. I want to just um, greet and welcome all of our visitors. If you are visiting with us, if, if this is your first time, uh, visiting with us, worshiping with us. If you are here in person, of course, we want to acknowledge any of those that um, have come to, to worship and visit with us. If by chance you are virtual, I want you to make sure you say hi in the comments section uh, so that we can uh, send you back some love and greetings and show appreciation. And of course, we wish all of those that are worshiping with us uh, nothing but God's very best. Let the church say amen. In closing, I just want to thank Reverend Brown. I want to thank Reverend Sims. I want to thank Elder Joyce Butler. I certainly appreciate their leadership and worship. Can we show our appreciation to these wonderful women of God? I'm grateful for our music ministry today. I thank God for Maurice Hurst. I thank God for Mark Essex. Wonderful men of God. I'm so grateful for the gifts and graces that they share with us, and we're so appreciative of them in a very, very special way. I want to acknowledge, of course, Otis. Uh, we thank God for Otis. He does a tremendous job. Elder Simmons is there. Deacon Eric Buckner is there. Alan Joyner is there. And y'all, we got a new member to the team. We got a new member to our team, Brother Lawrence Jones. He's in the balcony. Y'all come on and just let him know you appreciate his joining the team. Son of Lewis and Deirdre, grandson of Liz and Lonnie, the Jones family. We certainly thank God uh, for this young man and the gifts that he is sharing with us. And I know the team is excited to have a new draft choice. Amen. Amen. Let me just thank uh, Mrs. Jones, let me thank our precious, precious usher. We thank God for her. So faithful on her post every week. The diaconate, we thank God for our di diaconate. We thank God for disciple men, the trustees, all the volunteers. And I thank God for you, you, and you for being with us this day. I just want to, of course, remind you there will be no 7 a.m. Power in the Park prayer call this week. Um, so uh, as Reverend said, y'all pray and pray uh, generously for all of us. I want you to remember me in a special way this week in your prayers, in your daily prayers. I certainly um, am in need of it and asking for it. Uh, Junior Church, uh, today, 1230, I always say it, it's, it's a wonderful ministry. Uh, well over uh, 50, 60 years. I run into people all the time that grew up in the neighborhoods. So met someone yesterday at the Kindness Campaign, the food giveaway. Grew up in the neighborhood 
and uh, it's so uh, refreshing to hear stories of how the junior church has been a blessing and a lifeline to so many and it is still still at work still at work and so we're grateful to Reverend Brown we're grateful to all of the volunteers uh, it is a wonderful ministry and if you have children if today I'm telling you get your babies get your children your nieces and nephews your grand get them piped into the Park Manor Christian Church, Junior Church, they will get the word and they will be firmly planted in the word and in the faith. And so I want to encourage that on this day. Yes, yesterday was a powerful day. Uh, we welcomed onto the campus of the Park Manor Christian Church, the kindness campaign and folks came. It was very orderly. They only let two or three people in at a time because you know how people can get when it comes the food so they only let a couple of people in at a time many of you were there and you saw that uh, but folks came from 11 a.m. to after one o'clock and everyone got served there was plenty of food plenty of vegetables it was an amazing uh, day for uh, our uh, vision of being able to coordinate be able to be in partnership and collaboration with other organizations and churches and so we thank God for the kindness campaign. And then I want to just acknowledge Eli and Jeanette. They put on a wonderful home expo on yesterday at Tully Park. It was an amazing event. I want to acknowledge their brilliant leadership and their genius and their hard work. It was a great, great day. And so I want to celebrate. Of course, when you all do something, we want to celebrate it. So let us know so that we can acknowledge uh, the wonderful things that the Lord is doing through the wonderful members of the Park Manor Christian Church. Want to mention, of course, next Saturday, April the 13th, Disciple Women's Spring event and that blessing box. You've got your envelopes. I want you to contribute generously to the blessing box so we can make sure that folks around the region, Illinois, Wisconsin, and Michigan, know that the Park Manor Christian Church handles business. So uh, please, please give and give generously. Don't forget, Reverend Sims did a brilliant job uh, this morning of an art did a brilliant job of sharing uh, what um, is called deferred maintenance and one of the things that we learned throughout you know our denomination uh, and our disciples uh, home uh, home missions um, and disciples church extension which is the lending institution of our denomination is that if one thing can drive a church out of business is deferred maintenance and so it's critically important that a building of this historic nature is cared for and considered. And so uh, what was pointed out is accurate and uh, that's just the, the, the structural stuff that needs to be done. And so our goal, you know what it is, is a quick $100,000 and I believe we're gonna get there. Uh, some of you can, can go ahead and write another check and help us to move forward. I know you got it. I know you got it. Come on through. I told you I want to get those screens in here. We can't even, we got, we got to take care of some other stuff, but it's so important so that, you know, those pictures could be a lot clearer that you saw today. Um, but we need your help. We need your financial assistance to be able to move forward. And I know you always come through. You always come through. I thank God for the part of Christian Church. Well, I think that's everything that we need to share today. Um, we're going to prepare now to go down from this place. And I'm going to ask that uh, you would stand. And Maurice is going to come lead us in a closing selection. I'll come back and give us closing prayer.
also, you know, we're, we've started that collaboration with the other two churches, Carter Temple and St. Mark. And our grant program, you know, we have that collaboration grant program with the state and with those other two churches. And what's happening in our building on every day with uh, youth uh, is really amazing. I pulled up yesterday and it was a big black um, bus limousine, Reverend Sims, ready to take the children. I forget where they were going. They were going somewhere. College tour. That's what it was, the college tour. And so the work is going on. The ministry is moving forward. I thank uh, Brother Art. I thank Mrs. M, Mrs. Montgomery, uh, and all of those that are helping with uh, to make sure that things run smoothly uh, with our grant. Let us pray. God, we thank you so much. Um, as the psalmist said, God is not dead. God is alive. God is alive in the Park Manor Christian Church, in its members in his loins, in our future, in our faith. We thank you, God, that you are yet still alive and at work in this universe. Lead us, guide us, protect us, and in the end, we ask that you would save us. We pray in the name that's above every name, in Jesus Christ's name, that all the children of God say triumphantly, Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you. 